Because anything that is imposed without the acceptance, the free will of another, it's not love. Anything that is not freely given or freely exposed or freely received is not an idea of love, but one of control, dominance. And God, he made us so now we could choose. We could choose to exist in him or apart from him. Now, this is man and woman, father and mother. And out of father and mother, you have something that has come out of them. What we have comes out of them, sonship. Son, because son is the one that carries the seed. And Yahweh said, this is how I am going to make with you for all generation, this idea of a seed. Where seed, where we can, where we know seed come from? Where seeds come from? In human anatomy, human persons, where seed come from? The, the man. Which part of the man? Stasis, a scrotum. Right? That's where it come from. Why would then Yahweh said that? Look, turn your Bible, sir, if you all have your Bibles here. If not, to Genesis chapter 17. Genesis 17 speaks about when Yahweh said, this is going to be a compact between you and I. I'm going to make a covenant between you and I. And you ought to cut your shells short, your prepuce, or for your penis. That's the man he's speaking to. Why are you speaking to a man like that? Why, why is the penis so important to him? Why? But yet soon we don't talk about the penis. A beautiful something. Men love it and women desire it. <laughs> because why? The penis was made for who? Who can tell me the who the penis was made for? Okay. Who the vagina was made for? For the man. That's right. For the man. Who the penis was made for? The woman. But who's the first person to take a bite or take a snap few or take a touch or take that desire of that penis? Who's the first person? Who? Are you afraid to say? Or look at the Bible. Or you feel like talking heresy? Look at the Bible. I know you feel like talking a kind of a craziness here. Look in the Bible. Yahweh made a covenant, right? He made a covenant with Abraham. He made a covenant with Abraham. And if he make a covenant with Abraham, it's for a reason. It's for a reason. It's for a reason. And this reason is very, very important. Why is it important? Why is it important that Yahweh continue to, to show forth this covenant with mankind? Why is it? And especially on Abraham's penis. Why? Who can tell me why? What generation? Huh? What generation? What 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 he is trying to establish here with mankind? What he's what he's trying to bring to remembrance with mankind? Nobody tell me. Are they talking to me, man? I like to talk to my um, my audience, you know. You're talking to me, or you're not, not talking to me? Hear what he said here in Genesis chapter 18. back to Genesis chapter 16, he said every one of your male must be circumcised you must circumcise the flesh of your foreskin to serve as a sign of a covenant between me and you throughout your generation, every male among you at the eighth day at the eighth day they must be circumcised this is including slave, those bought with money, those who took, who were captured in war. Why it is 
the penis is so significant why it is Yahweh saying Abraham this is a covenant and a compact between you and I why is the penis so important in the studies going gone by we see to date where doctors are connecting the dot between the penis the mind and this unknown but because we live in a relativistic postmodernic environment this unknown is sometimes forgotten and it is viewed as naturalism where we are all we all came from a higher primate and we are just evolving and this is all part of evolution but the bible through its test of time tends to differ with that ideology and that construct why because we know from the presupposition that god said in the beginning elohim the all-powerful creator made all things. He made all things for himself. Now by he making all things, let me bring you here. When he made, he said, now let us make man after our likeness in our image. And he made Adam, which is humankind. Right? He made humankind. And now from humankind, who he took out of Adam? Eve. He took Eve out of Adam. So he took Ish. He took Ish out of Ish. He took woman out of man. And now as he took woman out of man, we see from before that woman and man can exist without God. They can exist without God. They don't need God to exist because we can reject God. He made us. But that which he gave, this what he blew into us, the, his Roha Hekodesh, his Holy Spirit. Right? When he breathed that into us, we became living matter, living soul, living entity. We now be possess a mind. And this mind now drives us and directs us. And this mind driving us and directing us, we see that we have existence to human person. But this to human person is to bring a unity, a blend and an expression to God Almighty. But then, how are we to bring glory to God if we don't understand what is going on with that person? Why it is all these hormones, coming back to the question that I asked before, when we reach age of 13 to 16, and we just want to break loose, we want to experience our body speaking to us, our mind, no longer we thinking with our head, because we, the only information we have in our heads is what? What the world taught us, what we learn in church, what we see our parents doing, what society has expressed to us, accepting one set of information. What is that? What Yahweh is saying. Why he made a covenant with Abraham on his face? Why he said, no, I will cut you short. In the Jewish community and even right now, there has been a debate going on concerning circumcision. And it's a, it's, a, it's a real issue that is plaguing the American society because they say it's so, it's so, um, uh, what's the word? It's so gruesome. It's so uh, barbaric. This circumcision. Why circumcise the young man? Why cut that foreskin off? And due to this uh, biological discovery, we see that that foreskin it's the most sensitive aspect of the male person it's over 2000 nerve ending around that skin area and it's an organ in itself because it's sensual and it has two functions a sensual function and somewhat a mechanical function because right, it acts as a, a covering for the ball that goes back and forth over the penis head as it moves, as it, it erects, and as it comes back down. Or even before sexual encounter, 
But now we see Yahweh is making a covenant with Abraham on the scene. Why? Why? I like to ask questions. And the questions I ask is why would Yahweh say to cut off the most sensitive aspect of my enjoyment? Because when you hear I having sex, I will enjoy it. But just say, he don't want me to enjoy it. Because most men, based upon the studies, they find when they cut off the prepuce, that foreskin, at a certain time in their sexual expression or encounter, because of the bareness of their penis, there's a sense of discomfort and they have to stop. They'll tell you, no, stop, stop, stop. Mm, don't, don't, mm, mm. Because it's a discomfort. Why is that discomfort in sexual pleasure for me? Why? But Yahweh said to do it. But the world today, they don't understand it. They say, no, because we are evolving, and we have evolved as higher primate, we have evolved so accurately that the skin don't need to be cut because evolution is right. And we have it there for a reason. But what's the reason? We see that the reason is for pleasure for who? The man. Because man loves pleasure. And we don't want nothing to discover what our pleasure. When we move it, we want to move. And just before the point of ejaculation, no time, that discomfort it triggers. So sometimes a person who is circumcised, they don't even know when they're about to have the orgasm. Because it's right and they can't really control it because it's, it's not... There isn't any e enough lubricant. There isn't the ball bearing effect with the foreskin covering and keeping that ball bearing well lubricated. And if you enter biology, you enter the study of the human anatomy, go look on the website, you know, um, on the internet, there's a volume of information outside there concerning the human anatomy, the male anatomy. I said the male anatomy, you know, more so than the woman because men are forgotten. And we don't understand why these things are the way they are, even in the Jewish community. But And still they're not even um, expressing it in the way that I'm expressing it because the Jewish community do, don't believe in Jesus Christ. And the whole reason why the penis or the foreskin is cut off even to drop this here as a caviar so you can understand and you can see the, the whole working of why the penis, why the circumcision, and why the cutting of the foreskin, it's a foreshadowing. Abraham is symbolic of Yahweh the Father. The penis is the point of contact for all generations through which man will remember that Yahweh has created us. And the foreskin is symbolic of who? Jesus Christ dying on Calvary. Because when you cut the foreskin off, what happened to it? It died. It died. But did it remain dead? Yes. But did Christ remain dead? No. It shows that what is pleasurable for you is this comfort for the Father. What is pleasurable for you and it's only within your human anatomy or your human dynamics. It's not all what you are. You are more than just your flesh. You are more than just your belly. You are more than just your appetite. You are a divine creation. You were created with matter and spirit. And if you don't understand why it is, you are the way you are. Then you're going to continue to what? Only want to please yourself. 